Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Sam Adams, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin, Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. And some words of wisdom this morning. Practice makes perfect. So be careful what you practice. And remember this. The lucky rabbit foot didn't work well for the rabbit. (laughs) Morning, everybody. Here comes Kate Smith, and God bless America. Followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance on a Thursday. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And a good morning to you, Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And, of course, some of our great advertisers like Western Waste Services, always at your disposal. Call, get on the route service at 734-6969. Right now, without further ado, let's have our Pledge of Allegiance. Good morning. Well, good morning, sir. Well, it's you? Uh, yes, I'd love to do the pledge. I would love to have you do it. Thank you. Go ahead. All righty. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That a boy, Wheels. Hey, listen, it's time for the weather, and the weather brought to you by K&R Rental, 256 South, 600 West of Habern, number to call, number to remember, 678-3122. K&R Rental, Honda engine dealer, all the parts you might need for wheel lines, everything, they've got everything from forklifts to lawnmowers. Let me tell you, they've been in business since 1979. Good, good folks at K&R Rental in Hey, Vernon, right now, here's Gina with the weather. A little bit more on the mild side for the next couple of days, and as we get on into the weekend, it could be warming up. Here's your weather forecast. Looks like sunny skies for today, a little on the breezy side. Winds out of the west, right around 15 miles an hour. Expecting a high of 80 tonight, clear skies, low of 49. For tomorrow, sunny skies, high of 81 with an overnight low of 50. Sunny and 85 for Saturday, close to 90 for Sunday. That's your weather for Zebeth Ranch. Thank you, Gina, and brought to everybody by Roger and the crew at K&R Rental. You better believe it, open Monday through Friday, 7 to 5.30, Saturday 7 to 2. They've got it all for you. Yep wide variety of tools and equipment just what you need at k and r rental six seven eight three one two two you know what it's time to sell some cattle merv come on in here at the burley livestock sale yard all right he gets out of steer calves there here to get all our 31 woman i am 31 going out oh that's the chant of the world's best auctioneer merv may at the burley livestock sale yard 1100 occidental avenue in burley number to call for cattle consignments and sale information six seven eight nine four one one, Merv May, Cade Roggy, and Lance Udy, the sale that works for you. Today, lots of good butcher cows. Lots of butcher cows going through. Jared Udy's bringing in a load of butcher cows. PBRS Dairy, Acme Dairy, Oak Valley Dairy, and sale time at 11 o'clock. And don't forget, they've got a big, big trailer line run that'll be coming in. And by the way, Merv May and the crew over there, they say, hey, thanks to the dairyman for June Dairy Month, outstanding job. Burley Livestock Sale Yard, sale today at 11 o'clock. Call 678-9411 for more information. Merv, let's go ahead and sell those steers. All right. 
Hey, good set of steer calves. They're here to get all the 31, one and a half, 31, one and a half, 32, two and a half, three and a half, 134, four and a half, five and a half, 135, 150, 135 and a half, selling ball at 35. Zeb Bell, get the bottom again. Oh, I tell you what, that guy, I just could listen to that chant all day long. He's really good at that. Calls are welcome and appreciated. Don't forget, we're going to have lunch bunch at noon, actually 11.30 today, 11.30 at Denny. And that's, of course, at 611 North Overland and Burley. And, oh, my goodness sakes, they've got all kinds of things. You know, now they have online ordering at Denny's, anytime, anywhere, anything. All you have to do is go to Denny's.com, hit the demand button, place your order, and 20 minutes later, drive in, pick up your order. I tell you, it's there, ready. Holy smokes, great breakfast. Fantastic breakfast. And all those new line of burgers, you're going to love it. Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland. Overland and Burley and 291 Pole Line Road in Twin Falls, America's Diner, Denny's Restaurant. And we want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to our gift certificate donors for Lunch Bunch today, Walmart, Smith's Food, uh, Handsome Mortuary, Stokes Groceries, Doug Martin with his red neck cup holders. And we're looking forward to it at 1130 today. Don't miss it. Oh. I think we got somebody knocking on the door out there. Deanne just ran down the hallway. I mean, it was a 100-yard dash. Anyway, don't forget, too, all your heating and electric and cooling needs at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Number to call, 678-0459. They're open at 730 in the morning till 5, Monday through Friday. And right now, you know, this summer, starting off really, really nice with the highs in the 80s, low 80s, etc., I'm loving it, but still it gets a little stuffy in that office or that front room in your house, whatever. Make sure if you've got an air conditioner, you've got the uh, filters to keep it running efficiently. Stop over to Ramsey Heating and Electric. Pick them up. 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, where they provide warm winters and cool summers. All right, now, the pro. you know what? I had a picture sent to me. And it just gave me the chills. I mean, I I can relate to this story in this picture because uh, something similar happened to me as a joke years ago. And but it's not funny. It's not funny. Picture this in your mind. You're looking at the back end of a horse. Now, I'm not going that way. I'm just telling you the straight truth about this picture that was sent to me. And you're looking at a saddled horse from the back end tied up to his uh, stall. Okay? Now, he's saddled. Underneath the cantle of the saddle, the back part of the saddle, is a coiled up rattlesnake. I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm really sweating, man. I tell you what, how many times have all of us just grabbed saddles and threw them up there and started cinching up and everything? And now, in this picture, I mean, it is really, uh, uh, it gives the chill wills to me. Underneath the back part of that rolled part of the candle, the Cheyenne roll of the candle, there is a rattlesnake all coiled up. Mmm, good morning, caller. You're on the air. Are you a snake lover? No, I can't stand them, and this scared me to death when I saw this picture. Oh, I tell you what, I am too. When I was a very young man, I was went down in this fruit cellar to get some fruit, and there was a, a trap set for mice or rats, and this blow snake had got caught in it near the end of his tail, and as I went down the stairs, it wrapped around my neck. Wrapped around your I was neck. Only about ten years old. Oh my gosh! I used to wake up at nights just screaming because I'd relive that. So 
Oh, my I'm goodness. I'm with you. I'm not a snake lover. You know, and I guess a lot of people, you know, they like to make pets out of them or whatever. And I know that Mike Todd, when he was with the fishing game and he made the uh, offer one time to bring in various snakes here into the studio so we could discuss them. And I told Mike he would not live another day if he did. And uh, I just don't want him around. But when I saw this picture that was sent to me, with this horse saddled, tied to his stall, and in the back of the saddle is the snake all curled up. Woo! Never assume anything. and <laughs> Be careful out there. What I wanted to call about is about the president's speech last night. Okay, real quick. I was just affixed to that TV. I mean, I listened to almost every word he said. Yep. And I admire this man to no end. Well, I'm going to tell you that uh, he had a very good speech last night, and the uh, Iowa people not only liked it, but across the board, he hit high ranks from A-pluses to B-pluses from the GOP and the independents, and then it was kind of funny. It was along partisan lines. The Democrats rated him C-minus to D-minus. Some even gave him an F. But, you know, the Democrats are the party of nothing because all they want to do is resist. Resist, resist, resist. And he made that very clear last night. And I really admire him for that. What did you think about that gal sitting just in back with chewing her cud? <laughs> I watched that, and then this morning, early this morning at 5 o'clock, they did a little feature on those three young girls that were chewing gum like crazy behind Trump last night. Actually, I wonder if they knew how silly they had looked and how, I don't know, childish, they perhaps would have not have chewed, like you said, their cud. Keith, i got to go do a commercial break. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. We'll see you at lunch. All right. I'll look forward to it. Hey, don't forget our friends at Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation. Yep, at 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Now, here's the deal. You're feeling kind of sore and stiff. You're having trouble dragging that right leg along behind you. You're having trouble reaching up on the shelf because your shoulder's giving you fits. Well, you might be recuperating from an accident or a surgery. Hey, they can help you get back to being you with all the exercise programs they've got and the hydrotherapy pool, the only one of its kind in the area. All their very highly trained physical therapists are waiting to serve you and help you get back to being you. Burley Physical Therapy and Rehabilitation, 1263 Bennett Avenue, Suite 2 in Burley. Call for an appointment at 678-1191. You do that today. There are some big, big things going on over in Rupert. I'll be right with you, caller. Holy smokes, the committee over there is really ripping, uh, looking for a ripping good time on the 4th of July. And let me tell you, they got a lot of things planned over there. A lot of things planned over there. The Rupert 4th of July committee with all their activities starting on June 28th and going all the way through July 4th. Holy cow, they're going to have... On July the 2nd, Sunday the 2nd, a featuring of the Idaho 25th Army Band right there on the square. That is going to be absolutely a phenomenal patriotic program. And then don't forget, too, they're going to have the Firecracker 5K and 10K, which is also going to have a 40K group bike race. Oh, my goodness. All of this is going to be a lot of fun. I mean, they're planning every year to make it bigger and better for you. The Rupert 4th of July celebration, 87th annual, and it's going to be be in Rupert, June 28th through July 4th. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Doing real good. Well, wonderful. Did you hear that big explosion last night? Uh, which one? One of all the liberals' heads blown up. <laughs> Trump said he's going to put solar panels on the wall. <laughs> I, I had to be your straight man on that because I wasn't sure what you were talking about. <laughs> Uh, You know, last night, I would imagine, and, and two nights in a row, two nights in a row, the night after the election where the Democrats got really uh, kind of flushed down the toilet, and then last night with Trump's speech and some of the things he said, especially when he said he's going to build a solar wall on the border and it'll generate uh, its own power to help pay for itself. I mean, I could just see the Democrats sitting on the edge of the Grand Canyon and having somebody else tip them off. Oh, yeah, I I heard it. 
I mean, I heard the big explosion. I, that is perfect. So now, now what are they going to back? Are they going to back the green energy, or are they going to back <laughs> coal and, and oil to stop the wall? I think it's great. You know, he really painted a lot of these absolutely perverted thinkers into a corner that they can't tiptoe through the paint without leaving a mark, let me tell you. I know it, and I love it when he was talking about coming together and getting things done. Yeah. You know, do the right thing for the people, jobs and yep. infrastructure. Yep. And, all that and get to have the Democrats come and join us and make it right? You no, know, the door's open. The door is open for people of common sense that know that the party, the Democratic Party, is absolutely teetering on the brink of an abyss. And the Schumers and all the hate-filled people from Hillary right on down the line, they've got to wise up soon. Or honestly, Doug, I'm making a major prediction before the first of the year the Democratic Party will cease to be as we know it now. It will. And you take Democrats of old like in... JFK's era. Yeah. If they see where the party was at today, they would not be a Democrat. Not the way they felt about this country. How could they be? The way they fought for this country. How could they be? No, they wouldn't be. That's right. No, I mean, uh, what we're seeing is nothing but resist. We're seeing revolt. Hillary even used that word. Uh, we are absolutely in uh, a status of, uh, well, we're not going to do anything. We're spoiled little brats. We lost the election. We should have won. Oh, we've got to change the rules. Boo-hoo. Uh, i just never seen anything like this. I haven't either. I have not either. And, and you know, in the famous words of an uh, ex-president, Elections have consequences. Oh, do they ever. You know, the criticism, and I want to talk a little bit about Trump here for a minute. Donald Trump is probably like a Brillo soap pad. He can be very abrasive, and he can cause a lot of mess. But let me just say this, and I know this might make a lot of people mad, but that's their problem, not mine. What he does with his tweeting, which I would like to see him cut back on that myself, but what he does is he's dealing directly with the constituency that put him in that office. And I honestly think that people in general look at him and they say, hey, he is talking to me. Oh, yes, yes. And what I love about Trump is he's not a typical politician. You just think back on all the other presidents that have been in that office, that have been a politician, except Reagan. Reagan wasn't a politician. And you just think back at them. Right now, they were gearing up for the next election. They yeah. were trying to make people happy. Donald Trump is trying to do his job and for Americans and make sure Americans come first. And he doesn't give a dang about what the people think, what the media think. He's going to keep on doing what he's doing. Yeah, and there's there's another point to be made right there, though, too, Doug. Uh, supposedly, and I'm underlining that word because I think it's false, phony, and absolutely fabricated. Supposedly, his rapport with the American public only shows a 36 to 38 approval record. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I don't believe in it. I think it's extremely phony. If all these elections, and there have been five, were these special elections, where the Democrats thought, oh, oh, oh we're going to show Donald Trump we're on a comeback, and they got whooped, and they got whooped bad. Now, you can't tell me that doesn't have a lot to do with the presidency and this administration and the new thought that's coming out of the Oval Office, and I think those figures on uh, approval ratings are completely bogus. Well, you need to look and see who's doing the approval ratings and who they're who they're uh, talking to yeah. and getting their opinion from. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you, if you get it, if you go half and half across the board, you know, or half Democrats, half Republicans, or a third and a third, you know, you got your independents in there. And if you do that, you'd get a better, better understanding. I agree. Doug, good to hear from you. I hope you're going to be at Lunch Bunch. I am. I've got... Two redneck cup holders, and I have a special surprise I want to give away. Oh, oh why am I starting to sweat? I'm give away so everybody has a chance at it. All right, buddy. Hey, thanks for your call. I appreciate it.
God thank bless. you. Thank you. Uh, calls are welcome. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. My old buddy Wheels, would you please tell everybody about what's going on in Elko, Nevada at the Silver State Stampede? Grab your hat and kick up your heels as the Silver State Stampede thunders into Elko for three big nights, July 13th through the 15th, for family entertainment at its best. This PRCA-sanctioned event brings you the thrill of pro riders going head-to-head, then local cowboys trying their luck in the world-famous Ring of Fear, such a thrill audience as all three nights. Enjoy the kickoff party on Thursday with Old West Bronc Riding, Mutton Bustin' Trade Show, Mechanical Bull, Fantastic Food, and treats, live music with the Jeff Palmer Band, and so much more. Tickets are on sale now at Roy's, the J.M. Capriola Company, the Moot Barn, IFA, and the Elko Chamber Office. Make your plans now to be at the Elko County Fairgrounds for the thrills and spills for the 2017 Silver State Stampede. For more information, call 775-934-2392. The 2017 Silver State Stampede. Don't miss it. Gonna be great. I just absolutely love those people down there at Elko and uh, announced that rodeo for many, many years. And they treated us just like we were family, man. I'll tell you what, they're great. A lot of fun in Elko. Hey, don't forget to our dear friend, and that is Dr. Christine Pickup of Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Oh, you're having, uh, you notice maybe you're not hearing certain things, certain sounds, certain conversations, or whatever. Well, it's not old age. Believe me, it It might be affiliated with another problem. Maybe it's a medicinal problem. Maybe there's something related to a disease. It could be many things. Well, what you better do is contact Mount Harrison Audiology and get a hearing screening. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad I did. They're right across from the Minidoka Hospital Emergency Room and the number to call, 312-0957. 312-0957. Mount Harrison Audiology and Hearing Aids. Don't you wait. Don't you put it off Uh uh-uh you call 312-0957 all right calls are welcome and appreciated give me a jingle on the landline 436-2244-1-866-927-4587 as you may or may not know we are in the midst of what islam calls ramadan And yesterday, there was another heinous, scary, almost deadly attack here in the United States. Now, I'm appalled that it's not getting the coverage that it should. Uh, Fox News Channel has carried it on every one of their major newscasts since yesterday. But the others are just kind of, oh, well, come see, come saw. A policeman at the Flint, Michigan airport. It's a smaller airport, kind of a little bigger than like Twin Falls or something like that. But a policeman that was on duty there was stabbed in the neck with a 12-inch hunting knife numerous times by a Muslim that yelled, Allah, Allah, Akbar, and... We all need to watch and beware. Fortunately, from the reports that I was given early this morning and things that I've heard on the news since, uh, the policeman, uh, fair condition, and the long-range prognosis is that he will be okay. Thank goodness. Thank God. But here we are, and the threats were running rampant yesterday. The uh, terrorist threats, the uh, information that was being watched and listened to, there were a lot of threats about the West. Be careful, United States, we're going to get you in the time left in the Ramadan month. All of this tells me to tell you, I don't care where you're going. Flint, Michigan, not that big a community. It might be Boise. It could be anywhere. It could be Salt Lake City. I don't care where the community is. Be careful. Be watchful. And be wary. And if you see something, say something. Please remember that again. See something, say something. Don't worry. Don't worry about somebody saying, well, you are a kind of a tattletale, and you said something that, well, big deal, nothing happened. Don't. Don't worry about the other naysayers. 
see something, say something, and demand, underline that word, demand that the people in charge, the officials, do something. Remember that. Demand. Calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. And uh, we would love to have you give us a call. Barry Equipment and Rental, don't forget they have all the equipment to get the job done right. South Lincoln and Jerome, and of course, Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls, and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. You know... They really have everything there. I mean, from the big, big deuce on loaders all the way to the Bobcat excavators. They got them in all shapes and sizes. And, you know, on all the equipment, if you don't know how to run it, what I like is they're going to take the time. They're going to take you out and back to the sandbox, and they're going to teach you how to run it. Oh, my goodness. Retail equipment, sales, equipment rentals. It's all there at Berry Equipment and Rental, South Lincoln, Jerome, Addison Avenue West, Twin Falls, and 159 West. Highway 30 in Burley. Absolutely. All right, now it's your turn. 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. You know, this is really kind of disconcerting, and I'd like you to chime in and talk to me on this. I heard a report this morning that said one in four Americans, 25% of us, 25%, 25%, 1 in 4, has zero, nada, nothing, no money, save for any type of emergency. Wow. I mean, wow. Uh, 1 in 4 Americans has zero, nothing, can't go to the billfold, the checkbook, the bank account, nothing for any type of emergency. Zero. And this really was disconcerting. 74% of Americans, almost three quarters of us, have to go into debt to pay for a possible family vacation. Wow! I mean, uh, the saving and the way it costs so much today to raise a family, and the government always seems to have their hands in your till... And 74% of Americans have to go into debt to get the money to have somewhat of a family vacation. That is extremely scary. What are your thoughts on that? Give me a call at 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. I want to talk to you about... um, Give me a call on that, but I want to talk to you about a Navy veteran in Galt, California. I have been to Galt, California numerous times. Know a lot of people down in that neck of the woods. And uh, his community has told him to take the flag down. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Call her. I'll be right there. Uh, Hold on. Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center at 924 Christian Way in Rupert. Oh, my goodness. The number to call. Find out more information for your loved one possibly moving there and residing there. 436-3200. It's the only locally owned and operated assisted living facility in the Minicasha area. And they make every effort to make Autumn Haven the best place. I'll tell you what, you call today and find out more, 436-3200. They're small compared to some, but with a bigger heart than most. Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center in Rupert. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning again. You know, you were talking about not having enough money for a family vacation, and it reminds me of what was said last night in the president's speech. These people coming into the country that are broke, how in the world are they going to make it? Because he wants to propose a five-year ban on any type of welfare. Yeah. And I cheer him for that. Well, you know, any time we get refugees coming in here, and caller number two, stand by, I'll be right there. These refugees are getting free housing, health care, education, etc. And you and I, Mr. Keith and Mr. Zeb, we're footing the bill. That is correct. And the issue is not right. And I see there was an article in The Voice. I don't take that rag, the Times News, but 
it's published by the same people, but they're talking about, I had my wife read the article to me, and it's about the, the refugee program, how they had a schedule for 1,000 people, and they're not going to have quite that many because of the, the president's ban on them. Mm-hmm. Well, I just think it's so rosy and nice to have CSI and the Times News and the Twin Falls Council and everybody say, how dare you, cold-hearted people, how can you be against these refugees? But yet they never talk about the cost factor. They don't talk about how the taxpayers are on the hook for a lot of money in the community. Like I said, housing, health care, education, etc. And I'm sorry, but my gallon of milk in the refrigerator that is labeled the milk of human kindness, it's dry. Well, you know, one thing that I think I've got figured out, that most of these refugees coming in are pretty smart people. They knew how to get into the program, for one thing, and I think that's where our danger is. It isn't that poor child that uh, come out of a bombing thing and somebody rescued him. It isn't that at all. It's these people who live there, but they can see a way clear to get something for free. Well, Keith, I appreciate your calls as always. Thank you very much. I got another one waiting, and God bless you. See you at Lunch Bunch. Thank you so much. Yep. All right, buddy. All right. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead. Um, yes. Um, I was wanting to refer back when you talked about people having to borrow money possibly to go on a vacation. Well, vacations are all fine and fun, and but I think it would just be ludicrous for anybody to even consider borrowing money to go on a vacation. Do something in your local area that's fun. And... Um, they ought to, I have never done it myself, but listen to Dave, I've listened to Dave Ramsey, the financial man on TV mm-hmm. all the time, mm-hmm. and I think he's got some terrific ideas, especially for beginners, you know, young couples that maybe be starting out, or ones that have several children, and he has a saying, rice and beans and beans and rice, yep. Yep. and I think he has some terrific ideas on uh, not borrowing money um, other than a home and driving a junker for a car, which I did for many, many years. And when I bought a decent used car, uh, I had saved for years to buy it. I was just a hardworking laborer. And um, that being said, I have just another comment about um, the refugees. I'm definitely against the refugee from the college and uh, but people are also a lot against the Mexicans coming in but I still think without them where would our farms and our dairies and our agriculture thing be well you know so I want to to say uh, well wait a minute don't hang up because I want to talk to you about your first point and I wanted to say how articulate uh, wheels, you've got to ride the gain over there so they can hear me, and then up and down fast so they can hear. Can you hear me better now? I can. Okay, thank you. Uh, number one to your first point about taking money that you don't have for vacations. I think you will agree with me, though, that uh, everybody in their lifestyle that absolutely is tied to the plow and they can't get away and do anything with their family they've got to do something at some point of the year where they can have maybe a little trip to uh, let's just say Salt Lake down to Lagoon or whatever you can't be tied to the plow 24-7-365 um, I agree with that to a certain extent that, but I think that mostly in our local areas um, we have fun things to do. Even if it's just going to the park for a picnic or a hot dog roast or whatever. And the end result, when you don't borrow money for those type of things, um, I think is so much more rewarding than going and spending a ton of money for maybe a day or two's vacation that we don't 
for the money that we don't have. You know, and I can relate to what you're saying. And again, Wheels, you've got to ride the gain a little bit and watch out for that feedback, which I'm getting right now. But I, I've got to say that I was 46 years old, 46 years old, when all of a sudden one morning while shaving, I looked in the mirror and I saw a guy that was in a lot of financial trouble and didn't have hardly anything to put money in, let alone any money to put it in. And I made a big commitment at that point that I was going to really change my lifestyle. So I agree with you. I agree with you. Okay, well, I, I'm, I'm glad. And like I said, for anybody that hasn't listened to Dave Ramsey, yes. and I've never followed his course, I was raised, oh gosh, beyond poor. So I think that instilled, I never even hardly heard the word vacation until <laughs> I was 40 years old. And But um, he comes on at noon on um 1310 a.m. Well, let's not give them a plug. Don't give them a plug, lady. Great listening information that helps people um, to get out these financial binds and know it's not easy. Okay. And I'm just giving Dave Ramsey a boost because I think he is very valuable to our financial world. All right. Well, I appreciate your call. I, I'm not in favor of giving other radio stations a plug, though. Don't do that on my program, because uh, they can go earn their own advertising money, not on my show, okay? Thank you. Okay. I'm All right. sorry for that. All I right. didn't realize. All right. Thank you. Wrong. Thank you. But, uh, thank you, Seth, for you, talking to me. Have a good day. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh-huh. When you call up and you're listening to a show or seeing something on another network or another station, I don't need to plug them. Uh, they can buy their own advertising. If they want to buy an ad on my program, I'll consider it. Uh, calls welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. And I want to talk to you a little bit about what's going on in Galt, California, so stay tuned. There are a lot of merchants over in Rupert that are saying, come on over and enjoy our great big Rupert Fourth of July celebration, including Magic Valley Carpet at 613 D Street in Rupert, just off the square, and they've got all your flooring needs, carpet, hardwood, vinyl, laminates, all of it tile. They've got it, and 36 years of experience, too. I'll tell you what, in professional installation, they want to have you over to Rupert for the Fourth of July celebration, Magic Valley Carpet carpet. Along with Haskin Insurance Service at 629 Fremont Street in Rupert. Oh my goodness, Mike, Dustin, Don, Terry, they're all there with over 50 years in combined experience serving people with all the insurance coverage that you need. Home, auto, farm, life, health, whatever. Give them a call. 436-4141. Haskin Insurance Service, 629 Fremont Street in Rupert. Ah. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Now, Zeb, hey, three words for you today to kind of ponder. United we stand. Okay. What do you mean by that? Well, think, think about that. Where are we today in our world with uh, Democrats and Republicans and uh, liberals and conservatives fighting one another? So where are we going down the line? You know, you're 100% right. In the United We Stand, I am sick and tired of the divisiveness. I've got friends that are Democrats. I mean, even though I chastise them on the air, of course, I chastise Republicans, too. I'm an equal uh, opportunity chastiser. But uh, right now, it's time to come together. I don't care about their partisan politics. I don't care about their uh, platforms, which I don't adhere to. But there's a lot of things that are going on right now that all of us, both sides of the aisle, need to come together on for the benefit and the security of this country boy isn't that true yeah well that was that was my comment for today so you uh, think about that as you go to lunch bunch i will california i will and by gully call more often i like your thoughts for the day i think i'll name you the official chairman of thoughts for the day (laughs) okay all right Thank you. Have a good day. I think right now what I better do as a thought for the day is have the weather forecast. And it sounds pretty 
pretty doggone good. Weather brought to you by Riverview Urgent Care at 382 North Overland and Burley, Twin Falls Urgent Care, 2392 Addison Avenue East in Twin, and Jerome Urgent Care at 133 West Avenue A in Jerome. Minor emergencies, major care. You know, like you fell off the ladder, you got a great big old gash in your arm, or you sprained your ankle, whatever. Remember, the doctor will see you now, not in four or five days, and they're open seven days a week. The Urgent Care is serving you, and right now, here's Gina with the weather. A little bit more on the mild side for the next couple of days, and as we get on into the weekend, it could be warming up. Here's your weather forecast. Looks like sunny skies for today, a little on the breezy side. Winds out of the west, right around 15 miles an hour. Expecting a high of 80 tonight, clear skies, low of 49. For tomorrow, sunny skies, high of 81 with an overnight low of 50. Sunny and 85 for Saturday, close to 90 for Sunday. That's your weather for Zevith Ranch. And that does not sound too bad. Woo! Weather forecast brought to you by Riverview Urgent Care in Burley, Twin Falls Urgent Care Twin, and Jerome Urgent Care in Jerome. Wonderful people, very efficient, very knowledgeable. Minor emergencies major care good morning caller you're on the air yeah good morning Zeb. you know i was just plum tickled to death when i heard president trump talking about not letting these immigrants have all the welfare we've got enough welfare in this country yep. without bringing it in yep. from out of this country we need people if they're going to come into this country they're going to be beneficial to the country. That's right. They're going to, you know, they're going to be able to provide for themselves and do and provide something that we need. We don't need another welfare case here. We've just got enough coming up from Mexico and different places in the world all the time just sneaking in. And, you know, we're covering them, too. And it's just something to me that's absolutely wrong. I can see no right in it. Jerry, you know as well as I do, the only reason that the Democratic Party is really a big proponent of letting all these people in is for one simple five-letter word, votes. Well, we don't need to be buying our votes. We need to be earning them. If you're going to be a candidate, learn to earn what you get, not, you know, have it handed to you. We, we need people that provide and do good and not we just have too much welfare i couldn't it. agree more i absolutely you know, agree has never cut i've never seen a time we've ever cut back on it we've cut back on the increase but i've never seen a time we've ever cut welfare back we need to be training our people to be productive to be energetic to be honest and to be fair you forgot one category college education, I teach them how to use a saw, or to lay pavement, or to pour concrete, or you know, there are thousands and thousands of jobs out there that people can do, and be productive and proud that they earn their way themselves, and if you earn it yourself, you feel much better about it than if you have it handed to you. I agree. Now, Jerry, just a minute, let me jump in here. You forgot one category. And that category is to be responsible citizens and take care of themselves and their families. And they need to be taking care of our country. Absolutely. Jerry, thank you. God bless you for your call. Appreciate it. You bet. You have a wonderful day. And you tell all them little kids out there in your radio land that the Lord will bless them. I'm sure of that because they get to listen to you. And that is a blessing. Oh, Jerry, you're a kind man. Thank you so much. And a good guy. I hope to see him at Lunch Bunch today. I was reverting uh, back a few moments ago. I said about Gall, California. And I've been there many, many times. Well, here's, here's the story. I'm going to give you the quick version of this story. Uh, the Homeowners Association in Galt, California, has told a veteran of the Navy to take down his United States flag. Now, I want to point out, he put two flagpoles on his front yard, two of them, and he flies two American flags. Why? 
because his brother and he both served in the military and they are extremely proud to honor our flag for their service in the Navy. Well, the Galt, California City Council said, oh, no, no, contraire. We don't care who you are. We don't care what you did or how you served this country. You'd better take that other flagpole down now and not fly that American flag because you are breaking city code. And we're going to fine you and we're going to charge you a permit fee. Well, thank goodness this Navy veteran and his wife are not to be pushed around by a bunch of wingtip shoes, three-piece suits that sit in coofy chairs on the city council. He is basically telling them, and I'm going to maybe clean it up a tad, no. <laughs> he's going to leave that flag there on that flagpole, and he's not going to be told by a bunch of people that have probably never had blisters on their hands from doing any kind of work, that United States flag is going to stay on that flagpole. You, City Council of Galt, California, just try and take it down. God bless them. God bless them. Calls welcome, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. Oh, and to you do-gooders on the left this morning, oh, you're advocating breaking the law. How dare you? Yep, I am. I am. Common sense, I think, prevails. When we have veterans that have put their lives on the line for this country, You would be a, and pardon the expression, but this is how it has to be said, a damn fool to try to tell a veteran to take down the American flag. Don't forget your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers, where doing the right thing matters. They've got all the tires for your vehicles, whether they're pickups, SUVs, cars, (laughs) horse trailers, boat trailers, whatever. I mean, they've got the tires with all the different tread designs for your kind of driving. Okay? And stop in and see them today and also ask about a free pre-trip safety check, a visual inspection for you and your safety of your family of tires, including the air pressure, wheel alignment for tire wear, front end components, brake components, make sure everything's all right, shocks and struts, battery, including a load test. Hey, stop in and they are going to serve you. Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, Daniel on Pole Line in Twin Falls, and my buddy Randy on Overland in Burley. They do the right thing because it does matter. Your Magic Valley, Les Schwab Tire Centers. How about a call? Come on, give me a jingle on the landline, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. By the way, what happened in Virginia days back with the shooting of uh, the Republican Steve Scalise and others... And by the way, I'm happy to report this morning that uh, Steve Scalise has now been upgraded to fair condition. God bless him. Thank you so much. And uh, But there have been many other death threats that have been issued to GOP House members, including Jason Chavitz of our neighboring state of Utah. Now, I don't know if you heard the uh, tape, the phone tape, on the death threat, but it was absolutely scary and pathetic. This vile and evil and deranged person that issued the death threat to Jason Chavitz should have been investigated. He turned it over for investigation, and nothing, nothing was done. Why? We are living in a world where you have to take everything serious and then walk it back. And I do not blame Jason Chavitz at all for being really upset and really wondering what in the world is going on when he had received a death threat and nothing was done to investigate and find out who and why. Holy cow. 
Calls are welcome, 436-2244-1-866-927-4587. And this goes in accordance with another college professor that has jumped off the diving board into a pool with no water as far as being stupid and racist. A black professor has been teaching our kids in that respective university uh, that he is waging war on white people and conservatives and according to his words he wants white people and conservatives gone from the face of the earth this pathetic teacher after hearing he might be in trouble and be fired oh then he turns around and tries to apologize and i certainly hope that the school the board of regents and everyone else will go after him and escort him off the college property forever we're going to take a little break, and we want to remind you that Lunch Bunch is going to be happening today at 1130 at Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland in Berlin. And our thanks again go to Walmart, Smith's Foods, Hanson Mortuary, Stokes Groceries, and Doug Martin for all of our gift certificates. And we hope that you're there at America's Diner, and that, of course, is Denny's Restaurant at 1130 today. We're going to come back with the Chamber of Commerce report with Kyla, and then at 9 15 tony mccammon it's time to grow from the university of idaho and much much more don't go away zeb at the ranch wheels take it away for the news Have you ever been ready to go and do something and then all of a sudden you catch your finger underneath the rim of your glasses and just kind of peel them off and they go flying across the room? I'm not kidding you. I just did that. Holy smokes, that was an uncomfortable situation. But now we've got our glasses back. I was underneath the table trying to get my glasses while the music was playing. Don't worry, Wheels, I'm here. I'm just trying to find my doggone glasses. Good morning. Welcome back to Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services. From the canyons of the Snake River. goodness sakes let's talk about dumpsters right now they've got dumpsters in all kinds of different sizes and according with how much uh, how much you're going to be throwing away for heaven's sakes me i'll take the big model anyway i've got a lot of things to clean out of this office clean out the garage and other things well all you have to do is call them let them know you need a dumpster they'll deliver it you fill it up they come and get it plain and simple absolutely they're always at your disposal Western Way Services, 734-6969. You call them today. Hey, real fast, too. I want to remind you about the Rupert Fourth of July celebration. Holy moly, are they going to have a ripping good time over there, June 28th through the Fourth of July, 87th annual Fourth of July celebration, and they're going to have all kinds of great food on the square, super super entertainment, and they're going to have lawnmower races. They're going to have melodramas at the Wilson Theater, the Firecracker 500 lawnmower race. What are you waiting for? I mean, yeah, buddy, it's going to be a lot of fun. All the way from June 28th through July 4th over in Rupert, the 87th annual 4th of July celebration. Don't you miss it. Wonderful fun. And real quick, before we go to our chamber report, I want to remind you about Ark Animal Hospital. And they have the warm hearts for the cold noses. Yes, they do. Ark Animal Hospital located at 750 21st Street. And that is in Hayburn, 678-1177. Summer season is the season for ticks and fleas. So if you see your dog there sitting on the floor of the basement or out in the garage just a scratching and an itching, they've got a problem. And you better make sure you take care of it because they can also transfer those ticks 
to you. So be careful. Ark Animal Hospital is a mixed animal practice, meaning big or small, they love them all. Call today at 678-1177, Ark Animal Hospital. Well, hello, Kyla at the Chamber of Commerce. How are you? Good morning, Zev. I'm doing great. How are you doing this morning? With a weather forecast like we have for this weekend of low 80s, sunny skies, I am in heaven. I can. I heard you announce that just a little bit ago, and I think it is perfect weather for the summer and perfect weather for a lot of folks just to enjoy some of the fun activities that are going on around here. And I had someone pop in yesterday, and they said, Kyla, be sure, please, to tell everybody that they are gearing up with those lawnmower races a little bit early. So they'll be running those on Saturday over at the Minidoka County Fairgrounds. I don't have the exact time, but everybody loves those lawnmower races. I think we get a lot of calls about that here, and it's just good fun. So if you're looking for something to do on Saturday, be sure to go check that out. And I'm so happy to hear you talking about the Rupert Fourth of July celebration. How much fun is that going to be? Well, they have fun every year, and they put a lot of effort into it. And, you know, I don't know of another town anywhere close to here that has a city square with that kind of activity going on all the time. I mean, there's a lot of things going on. Yes, you know, and I'm just so excited about it. We have been getting a ton of calls here at the Visitor Center a lot of people dropping in or people calling, which blows my mind, but it's so fantastic for Rupert. They're calling from out of state saying, hey, what day is this and what's going on? So for all of the folks that are listening out there, for your friends and family, or maybe you know, you've know you got family that's coming in that lives out of state, you can go to rupertforth.com. And what that is is their website that they've created. It literally has a play-by-play of every list and activity of what time and where it's going to be happening and who it is. But it's Rupert, R-U-P-E-R-T, and then fourth, the number four, then T-H dot com. Mm -hmm. And I would just encourage everybody to write that down or memorize it because that will help you out a lot. I think, um, you know, one of the biggest things we see is everyone wants to know what time the fireworks are at or they want to know which band is playing on what day or when that Christmas in July breakfast is going to be, which is kind of one of the kickoff things, and that's on June 30th. And so, um, you know, just go to RupertForth.com, and you can find everything out. All right. Now, along with that, what else do you need to get on real quick? i got two minutes left. Well, real quick, you can always check us out at MinicasiaChamber.com, our website, and go to events. We've got all these things listed as well. Um, a sad reminder for everyone, though, the Idaho Regatta will not be happening this weekend. And we've had several calls people asking about is the um, fish fry and all that going to be happening today on the square. And we were called by the city yesterday, and they said, no, all of that is canceled. So it's a bummer. We're hoping that they'll be able to reschedule the event, as uh, Lewis Schindler has told us, the organizer, maybe for September. But, again, we just want to remind folks, in case you show up and go, where are the boats? There won't be any there this weekend. That by, we know of. by the way, Kylo, the reason was, was it not, because of high water in the river? Was that the main reason? Well, what we were told by, because we called Lewis, um, you know, because he's the chairman, so he's going to be the word of mouth that, you know, is going on, and he just said yes, that both the sheriff's departments had told him they have concerns with the really high water and um, wake effect on the shoreline, et cetera. It's a real bummer, you know. Uh, you can't control Mother Nature. That's the one thing I've learned in life. And so I'm hopeful for that whole committee. They've worked very hard. And for all the racers that really just enjoy coming to this area, that they will be able to have the event maybe in September. And hopefully the weather will just be as awesome as it always is in September in that early all right. time, uh, time frame. And of the 973 ways to get a hold of the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce, what are some of the easiest? You can give us a call, 679-4793. That would be the easiest. Or just go online, minicashachamber.com. <laughs> Zeb, you always crack me up. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I am okay. going to do that, and we're going to talk to you next Thursday just before everything gets set to go for the 4th of July festivities. So, Kyla, take care. God bless. God bless, Zeb. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Kyla, over at the Minicasha Chamber of Commerce, and I really appreciate all that they do. Uh, we're off the air?
Oh, yes, I was just going to let Wheels, you. Uh, I'll call you right back. Just hang up and put the phone on, and I'll call you right back. We have trouble with the system again. Go on. Okay. All right, get me on. Here we go. We're back on. We had a little trouble with our phone line, I believe. There you go, Wheels. How's it coming through now, Wheels? Let us know. Yeah, you sound perfectly fine now. All right. Wiping was getting crazy there for a second. Well, always let us know immediately. Thank you. And by the way, before we go to It's Time to Grow with Tony McCammon, we're going to tell everybody about Hanson Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. Number to call, 436-5636. Hanson Mortuary, a family place. Families live there. That's right. Joel Heward and his family and the wonderful staff always serving you. And by the way, I want to mention this. Thank Thanks to Joel, that a lot of the older folks uh, that have a hard time getting around, don't worry. They can come to you and help you with all the arrangements after there's the passing of a loved one, always with the highest ethical standards, with unquestioned integrity. And by the way, too, Joel Heward wants to remind everyone is invited to the 4th of July Veterans Breakfast at Hanson Mortuary starting at 8.30 on the morning of the 4th of July before the parade starts. Hanson Mortuary, 7106. Street in Rupert, 436-5636. Right now, we're going to go to the phone line and uh, learn about how to grow things, how to take care of things, and that's with It's Time to Grow, and here's horticulturalist from the University of Idaho, Tony McCammon. How you doing, Zeb? Well, where were you last week? You played hooky. I did. I uh, and, and things are all meshing together. I don't even remember where I was. Where was I? Oh, I was in Lake Powell. Oh my! Did you have a good yeah, time? I was down there, getting torched. Man, that thing is like a furnace. When it gets above hundred degrees, those rocks just radiate heat. I, you know something, Tony? i got to tell you that we missed you, but the young man that you had come on the program, Mark Dolichek, what an interesting segment he created with the raised garden beds, etc. He did a really good job, and I want you to tell him that. I will, yeah. He's a great, he's a great kid. He's, he's uh, just finishing up his horticulture and, and some of his degree there and uh, at CSI, and he's, yeah, he's, he's, doing a fab- he's done a fabulous job. He's He's now retired from uh, his internship here, but uh, we, we, we sure miss him, and he, he did a great job. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely pass that on for you. All right. Now, tell everybody real quick, who are the sponsors of It's Time to Grow? We want to give them a special shout-out and a thank you. You betcha. Southern Idaho Horti- the, the Southern Idaho Horticulture Programs, uh, the Master Gardener Associations in the Magic Valley and the Minicasha, Master Gardener uh, Association, um, Monty's Plant Food and Humic Acids, uh, they also sponsor this program, as well as Sears in Burley. Okay, now what is the topic, because you and I didn't visit after last week, what are we going to talk about today? The last time you and I visited, we were talking about bugs and flying things and crawly things and everything else. Well, I thought we could talk a little bit about plants. I'll tell you what I was doing uh, the last couple days. Um, my uh, my associate, uh, St- Dr. Stephen Love from Aberdeen, and I went up to Moscow to drop off a bunch of native plants that we've collected throughout, uh, uh, well, this collection was, was the, the Frank Church Wilderness. And that was quite an experience. In fact, uh, my, my dear friend, Steve Love had a heart attack two miles into the Frank Church Wilderness last year. Oh, no. And we had to uh, get a helicopter to lift him out. Oh, no. And, uh, so I, I went on and collected the plants, and we, uh, we, we deposited those at the uh, herbarium there on campus in Moscow. And then on the way back, we went out and looked for some more plants. And uh, he's doing really well, by the way. Obviously, he's still with us. And uh, anyway, so, so let's talk a little bit about... Uh, Maybe native plants and maybe just uh, just landscape plants and uh, things are in bloom right now in most of our la- most of our yards and uh, things things can be very very beautiful if we 
we design them right and use the right right plant. Let me ask you this. You know, there's a lot of people that are going to use the 4th of July weekend, uh, maybe Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday on the 4th. They're going to stay home and try to change their home into a different kind of an outside perspective. How do they know what to do? How do they know what to plant? Uh, well, it's, it's really about uh, putting together a good composite of uh, different textures and different colors, uh, and colors that, that work well together. Um, uh, so, so, you know, it's really about, you know, designing first on paper, and this is kind of what I want it to look like, maybe even looking at some, some photos online and finding some, uh, some things that, that you believe look, look right, that look good, and then saying, okay, so what's that plant and what's that plant? Uh, taking it to a nursery or to the, the, the master gardener clinics and saying, do you know what these plants are? Um, and uh, and then and then trying to mimic that in your in your own landscape. Those those you know those are some really easy steps in creating some good uh, good good looking landscapes. All right, now Tony, when they make a decision on what they want to do and what they want to plant there, how do they go about finding what they want and where to plant? Well, that's that's about going to the nurseries, and the nurseries will have. Um, lots of different varieties of uh, hookahs. Uh, those are the coral bells. They'll have multiple varieties of those, and salvias and 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 mints. Um, you know, they'll have multiple varieties, and that's where it gets kind of difficult because someone says, "Oh, that's a mint," or "That's a that's a hookah." Well, you go to the nursery, and now you see there's 30 different varieties of hookah, and you're like uh, scratching your head. So um, it's mainly just about trying trying to make a good composite of of multiple colors and uh, multiple textures, and texture is kind of how the plant um, blows in the wind. Let's that's, that's, that's do that. And then there's there's different form and weight. Um, so that's how bold the plant is. Does it have really big big leaves that uh, you know, like a, a rhubarb plant would be a very bold, heavy texture in the landscape? And you put that next to a grass, and that grass is a really fine, feathery. Um, uh, you know, the wind has a little bit more. Uh, uh, advantage against uh, blowing that that type of plant around, and so you put those two plants together, a big grass and a big um, rhubarb, and you have a pretty good texture combination, yeah, and a uh, good form combination as well. So, and then you start adding the the flowers in, and and purples and 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 yellows work really good together. Blues and yellows work really good together. Um, those are called a split complementary uh, color design. Uh, but then you could just go, uh, you know, if you if you know what a color wheel is, you just go to one side of the color wheel and say red, pinks, uh, orange, and, and yellows, and put all those together, and that actually makes a really good mm. color design as well. So mm-hmm. uh, let me just run down a couple plants that are some of my favorites. That uh, if someone's out, if if uh, you're out there listening, you can you can write these down. Uh, Penstemon, uh, one of the best native plants that we have. Uh, it's the one that's. If you're driving, driving up over any of the passes right now, you'll see lots of purples, reds, right. uh, yellows, and whites. And a lot of those uh, spiky-type plants are called penstemon. There's over 250 varieties of native penstemon in the Pacific Northwest alone. So it's a, it's a beautiful plant and very uh, worthy of being in your landscape. Uh, the blue salvias are really, really striking right now, and they, uh, they, they last a long time. They bloom a long time, so... So look for the salvia. Salvia pacophyllus is a, uh, a purple sage, uh, more native, more drought tolerant, and just uh, absolutely a, a showstopper as it comes to um, comes to the, the salvias. Uh, your hostas are great for shade, and uh, they they they're just a beautiful texture, a good broad texture, kind of fits in that same category as your rhubarb. And then if you want to look like a professional landscaper. You need to add le- uh, liatris. Um, the liatris is a bulb, uh, very fine texture, and a, a very beautiful flower, almost a, a lily form um, formation of, of the plant. Uh, but it, it comes up with a really, really nice uh, uh, purple uh, spike to it. I have a question. Um, I, I mentioned the hookara for shade, bergenia for shade. Um, Lamium for shade, uh-huh. lamb's ear for shade. 
So there's 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 the shade plants, the full full sun plants, and kind of the partial shade, partial 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 sun plants that. Uh, that's kind of how they'll be listed on their tags when you start looking around at the nurseries. Okay, now I have a question, a burning question. For you, the most world-famous horticulturalist from the University of Idaho. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Who was the horticulturalist that gave all these plants names like Hukra? Rhubarb, penstemon, where did they come up with it? Did somebody all of a sudden just say, Hukra, that's what we'll call it? I mean, how'd they come up with the names? Oh, uh, you know, botanists are, are funny people. Sometimes they see it, they call it like they see it. Sometimes the, the, the Latin names mean something. Um, so, but, but there's lots of different botanists that uh, discovered some of these plants. And so when they discover these plants, they give them names. And, uh, uh, and usually the, the genus is something relative to um, what the plant uh, description Latin-wise would be. And then the, the species name, that's where they can have fun, and they sometimes they, they call it Idahoensis because it's found in Idaho, mm-hmm. um, or uh, they'll, they'll call it after themselves. Um, so Rydbergii was, uh, was a penstemon. and Rydbergii was found by a guy named Rydbergii, or, or, or Rydberg. Um, and so, so sometimes they'll call it after themselves, but... Yeah, there's lots of different botanists and lots of big books out there um, for IDing plants. And uh, and then some of them have stories along with them. Uh, okay. There's a great story. Uh, I don't know if we have time to, to do this story, but uh, uh, there's a plant found in the South Hills, only in the South Hills, uh, that a researcher was seeking around for uh, asking Native Americans. What's that? No, I didn't say anything. It was a blip in the phone line. Go ahead. All right, all right. So he was uh, he was um, finding uh, Native American tribes that uh, trying to find a um, uh, contraceptive and uh, and finding out what the Native American tribes were using. And uh, they came across this plant, and they said, "This is the plant that we use for for the purposes that you're asking about." And uh, <laughs> and he took that back and started doing some research on it. And then World War II broke out, and he kind of lost the lost the the drive in that paperwork. Uh, all the paperwork kind of got pushed to the bottom of the pile, and, and he was working on other things uh, for the war. But uh, uh, after the war, he came across that uh, that file and started working on it, and that is the chemistry that we have today uh, that we use for our contraceptives. Oh, my and goodness. Oh, my goodness. Mainly based on a plant that we found in the South Hills. Really? Well, now, that is a good story, and I'm glad you took the time. Real quick, I've only got about a minute and a half left, Tony. Uh, what about the planting of these uh, different shrubberies, if you will, and or decorative plants? I mean, is all of that laid out uh, where you buy them? They'll tell you how to plant them and how to take care of them? Well, you know, trees, planting trees and trails is a lot different than planting uh, uh, herbaceous plants, your, your flowering plants. Uh, when you plant your flowering plants, you definitely want to take them out of the pot, and you tease out the, the roots a little bit. Uh, if, if you have any circling roots, maybe don't buy the plant. Um, try to find a plant that isn't doesn't have circling roots around the base of the pot, uh, because circling roots you, you want you want the plant to be established in the pot, but you don't want it to be root bound in the pot in the pot because that can that can cause uh, you know uh, short term death really. So, so you want to make sure that the, the roots are teased out a little bit, um, and if they're root bound, then just don't buy the plant. Uh, try to find a different plant. Okay. And uh, and then when you're when you're putting them in the ground uh, with a lot of these flowering plants, uh, good phosphorus uh, products. Uh, uh, that's a, a product that has a really high middle number uh, in your fertilizer bag. The first number represents nitrogen. Second number represents phosphorus, and the last number re- represents potassium. So make sure you're putting uh, some type of a, a fertilizer, a feeder that has a really high um, middle number. Uh, somewhere around uh, 25 to 30 uh, would be really good, and that's mm-hmm. going to help with your blooming and your rooting of the plant to okay. get it established to that that location. And with with your herbaceous plants, and don't be afraid to add a lot of uh, mulch and um, compost and potting soil to the bed. I, I don't recommend that when we're getting into native plants, and I don't recommend that when we're getting into, um, you know, xeric or dry 
dry, loving plants, um, and also your trees and shrubs. Okay. Uh, plant those back into native soil. Okay. Uh, but some, you know, your your annuals, uh, your begonias, and those type of things. The more um, organic matter you have in the soil, the better that those plants are going to do. All right. Tony McCammon, University of Idaho horticulturalist, and the sponsors of It's Time to Grow are... Southern Idaho Horticulture Programs, the Master Gardener Associations in the Magic Valley, as well as the Minicasha area, and Monty's Plant Food and Humic Acid, and Sears in Burley. Real quick, Tony, what are we going to talk about next week? Real fast, I got 15 seconds. Oh, uh, let's let's uh, let's go back. Maybe we need to talk about soil a little bit more. Let's talk about soil and planting trees and shrubs. All right, Tony McCammon, University of Idaho horticulturalist. It's time to grow. Tony, God bless. Have a good week. Have a good one. All Thanks, right, Jeff. sir. Thank you. I really enjoy him on the radio. Uh, really knows his stuff, Tony McCammon. Holy smokes, I'm running late. Rita, stand by. I'm a-coming. Hey, don't forget Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. When you think about life insurance, think Cameron and Siemens. Health insurance, again, think Cameron and Siemens. Retirement planning, employee benefits, they really care and are dedicated and responsive to your needs, what you need to accomplish what you need to do. Call for an appointment today. They are good. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. The number to call, 436-4424. 436-4424. Also want to remind you about Let's Ride. 270 Highway 24 between Rupert and the World. Oh my goodness sakes, they're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 6, Saturdays 9 to 4. With a great weather forecast this weekend, you better get in there and check out all the watercraft, all the watercraft at Let's Ride, along with the four-wheelers and the side-by-sides. Get out and enjoy southern Idaho because this place, Let's Ride, is where the fun is sold. All the accessories, great service department, you better stop in today. Let's Ride 270 Highway 24 in Rupert, yep, where the fun is sold. Uh, in just a moment, we're going to have Rita Ramsey on the program with us. I'm uh, running just a little bit late here this morning, and I apologize. I also want to acknowledge our dear friends with Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center, and I want to say thank you very much. They've been on our program for quite some time now, and they are the only locally owned and operated assisted living facility in the Minicasha area. Absolutely, they make every effort to make Autumn Haven the best place. And they invite the public to visit our facility anytime for tours or just check them out. Call them at 436-3200. That number again, 436-3200. And they really want their residents to be involved in community events such as going to the Wilson Theater and upcoming 4th of July in Rupert. And remember, Autumn Haven Assisted Living Center is small compared to some, but with a bigger heart than most. Oh, my goodness sake, she's probably sick of waiting on me. Good morning to the lovely Rita Ramsey. How are you? Good morning. I'm real good. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting, Rita, but sometimes I don't look at the clock as much as I should, and I run late. I apologize. Oh, no problem. Listen, what a week. What things are going on politically? I mean, my goodness, the Democrats, they're, they're still dragging their knuckles and their feet through the sand in resist, resist, resist. And last night, i got to tell you, whether you like the man or not, I thought his speech was excellent in Iowa last night. It drew high praise and high remarks. What are your thoughts? I thought it was really good as well, and I thought it was quite good how he basically shut down the protesters and they were escorted out. Um, I, I'm glad to see that he's going around the country and addressing people uh, probably almost as much as he was when he was uh, campaigning. But he's, he's actually touching base with those who elected him, and they're still feeling a part of it. I'm, I'm troubled with a few things that are happening right now, political-wise, and we're not hearing very much about it. And, and um, I'm kind of, you know, like, so why are we not hearing about some of this kind of stuff? One of the things that I'm really kind of concerned about is Jared Kushner had all of his, uh, his uh, techie friends into the White House a day or two ago, 
and um, they met with President Trump, and one thing that they came out, and, and these are the ones who, who really hated Trump early on, and when he was being um, just being a candidate, is, is that they came out saying, oh, well, we're really glad. We're going to have some, uh, some immigration uh, reform, and, and it's going to make it better for us. Well, you know darn good and well what that is. That's going back on, on letting the, uh, the people from India and some of those work for $2 an hour when you've got all of these other people who have got degrees in technology and stuff that they're, the, these immigrants are outbidding them by working way, way, way cheap. And so that's one of the things that Trump <clears throat> ran on was that we would, we would make some of these laws change. And if they're coming out happy about it, you know that somewhere somebody promised them, well, it's going to be in your favor. Are they to come out and either said no comment or we didn't make any kind of progress in that visit? So um, just kind of makes me wonder who's promising what and is there going to really be some, some immigration reform in, in that regard? Right. You know, I guess I'm going to play the other side of the aisle here this morning because I'm trying to remain as much optimism as I can. I looked at the Democrats, and they didn't even give it 24 hours after that horrendous shooting back in Virginia. And they were hammering, and MSNBC was going after the, the guy that got shot, Steve Scalise. I mean, they could not leave it lay, and they could not show any kind of sympathy or empathy whatsoever. I'm going to remain optimistic, and I want to say that I think what I saw last night and what I heard in the speech about the veterans and about our national security and everything, that was the most optimistic I've been listening to Donald Trump since even before he threw his hat in the ring. I was kind of impressed with the thing last night. Well, that really was, and, and he's, um, he's, he's got some, some excellent speeches. Whoever's uh, you know coaching him on speeches and so forth is has decided to turn some of the things Reagan-esque because that's what we need to hear to help yeah. make America great again. Yeah. And I and I think that that's that's fair, and and um, I I appreciate that because it does make you think that. But on the other hand, there's a ton of stuff going yeah. on that's not getting any news coverage, and it just makes you wonder. And, and I'm not saying this is Trump. I'm saying this is uh, maybe anybody but Trump. I don't know. Yeah. There, there's a lot going on that nobody's talking about, and I think we need to have some conversations about it and get it out in the in the public's mind so that people aren't thinking, oh, everything is just wonderful, because, you know, who's talking about the the ship that was rammed the other day? Exactly. Yeah. Nobody's talking about that. How on God's green earth did that ever happen Ooh. with our military, the way that they are, how could they have got rammed by a, a Japanese merchant vessel, for crying out loud? Well, I agree that there's a lot of things that are being scanned and scanned over in our news. But one thing I want to bring up this morning, and I want to get your comment on it, because I think it's falsified. They came out and said the other day that Trump's approval rating is at 36%. And then I got to thinking about this, and I mentioned it to my wife last night at supper. Wait a minute. The GOP just won five special elections for the House of Representatives, defeated the Democrats. The Democrats have proven themselves to be absolutely not acceptable by the voting public. How can they be winning like this when everything really is tied to the coattails of the current administration? I think the numbers on popularity are skewed by liberals, and I don't think they're telling the truth at all about what this president has done or how he's being accepted. Well, I think their polls reflect, and we've talked about this before, anybody who pays attention to what's going on knows that when they call somebody and they, they intentionally make sure that they're talking to to the the party that they want to talk to instead of just okay we took a poll of 82 people and this is what they said right. it's like oh we took a poll of 82 people and by the way only 5 of them were republicans no you know, I... so i i think that the polls are definitely skewed um, the thing with the uh, the races that the republicans have been winning is is that people are darn tired of the democrats and what's going on I can't wait to see, and I think it's starting to happen. I, I don't know how fast it will go, but it looks to me like that there's going to be some uh, some inside uh, 
maybe a coup with Nancy Pelosi trying to get her ousted out of there because she is just a big weight around somebody's neck. You know, I'm so glad you brought that up. It is one of my talking points I wanted to ask you about. Nancy Pelosi is pretty close, if not right at, 80 years old. Then they came out the first of the week, and there were some Democrats throwing around the possibility and the feasibility of going after Joe Biden for president in 2020, of which he will be 78 years old in that particular election year. Don't you think the Democrats can get the memo that maybe they need new blood? Maybe they need to look at their platform. Maybe they better reevaluate what the American people want or don't want. Well, I think that that's right. However, in politics, and I learned this the hard way these last few years, is the only way that politics works is if everybody goes up the ladder and gets their turn. And so it's not like somebody new can come in here and and say, this is what we need to do, because you've got politicians, and it's as, as prevalent in the Republican Party as it is in the Democrat Party, that unless you have paid your dues, and you've climbed up the ladder from the bottom rung up and made every step in between, you're not going to get anything. You're not going to get any credibility. And if you do happen to get elected, we're going to boot you boot you out and make you irrelevant. But what about, how does that play in the scenario with that Oshoff that was running for the congressional seat in Georgia? He was a punk kid, 30 years of age, that didn't even reside in the same district, but yet Hollywood and others gave him close to $50 million. Well, it all has to do with who, who they've got to go with. It's kind of like, well, he's the only Democrat, and I guess we ought to see if we can't get him elected, even though, you know, there's... There's a lot of things hanging there. We, we'll just go ahead and see if we can get behind him. The thing that's bad about that is that they spent more than $23 million on, you know, each side did. Yeah. And he only garnered 124,000 votes, which cost, if you figure it, $23 million that he had or that he spent, and, and I think it was way more than that. Those votes cost him 18000 bucks a piece, and he still lost. No, I couldn't agree more. Hey, we've got a caller with a question. Real short. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air, please. I was watching Newt Gingrich this morning, and he said the best thing for the Republicans would be if Nancy Pelosi stayed in there and kept pulling their party down. I'll hang up. (laughs) Well, you know, Miss Botox, uh, I don't think is going to leave the party. What are your thoughts about it? Go ahead, Rita. I doubt that she'll leave. I, I think that Newt Gingrich is, you know, and he's, he's full of wisdom. I don't agree with some of his big government uh, tendencies, but he is a smart man. He's an excellent political analyst, and he's absolutely right. Nancy Pelosi is the best thing that ever happened to the Republican Party because she's just a joke, and it's sad. You know, let me just throw this at you because I, it's been eating on me now for about a month. The absolute no evidence about any kind of a Russian collusion with the Trump administration and the Democrats are trying to dig their fingernails into cement and make something out of nothing. But yet at the same time, why is everybody overlooking the Obama administration possibly spying on the Trump campaign during the election and all the illegalities that center around Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and... And what happened with the Attorney General at that time, with, of course, Clinton going on the airplane. Why are they overlooking all this stuff? It's just like when you're trying to get the attention of a dog. You you hang something in front of him so that he won't see what's going on behind him. And, And this is what they're doing. They're hanging everything that they can out so that nobody will pay attention to the illegality of things that happened. There should be an attorney general, number one, and a second attorney general, number two, and the president and everybody else on down the line, uh, even the, the FBI people and the CIA people and all of those who were involved in that deal with Hillary, and there should have been an investigation. And the part that makes you mad about it is when they started having investigations, even the Republicans were saying, well, we just don't really see anything there. And, and they took Comey's advice about, well, Hillary's intent probably wasn't to be unlawful, so there shouldn't be any file, any charges filed. Well, for crying out loud, 
that isn't the way that they do things with with the Republicans. I mean, they're they're doing as fast as they can trying to get rid of Trump and saying, oh, you know, let's impeach him or he needs to have this filed against him or the other. They're not even looking at the law, but they're just looking at everything that they can trying to focus on Trump so that this other stuff will simmer down and die. I agree with you. Rita, I've got to do a weather forecast, and then I want to come back and talk to you about Ramadan and the terrorist activities that are going on around the world. So stay tuned for that just a moment. Right now, our weather sponsor is Phillips Oaks Goodwin Crane and Company, and they've been providing accounting services to the Minicash area for well over 50 years. They are the best, and they can and will help you with your tax return preparations, tax planning, financial statement preparations, Operations, retirement planning, all of this and so much more with two locations to serve you, 1710 Overland Avenue in Burley and 625th Street in Rupert. Remember, work with the best. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And right now, here's Gina with the weather. A little bit more on the mild side for the next couple of days. And as we get on into the weekend, it could be warming up. Here's your weather forecast. Looks like sunny skies for today. A little on the breezy side. Winds out of the west right around 15 miles an hour. Expecting a high of 80 tonight. Clear skies, low of 49. For tomorrow, sunny skies, high of 81 with an overnight low of 50. Sunny and 85 for Saturday, close to 90 for Sunday. That's your weather for Zebeth Ranch. Appreciate it, Gina. Thank you very much. And the weather brought to you by the folks that really are professional in serving you with the best of accounting services in the Minicash area for over 50 years, Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. And offices in Burley and Rupert, get a hold of them today. They can help people starting a business, a partnership, or a corporation, anything and everything to help you, your family, and your business. Phillips, Oaks, Goodwin, Crane, and Company. Real quick, we've got some merchants that want to say, come shop with us for the 4th of July celebration in Rupert. And they they include Dixon Oil Company at 602 South 2nd and Rupert. They've been in business since 1951, and they know how to give you and your vehicle the best service possible. Don't forget, Daryl and the crew at Dixon Oil wishing you and your family the best and safest 4th of July ever. Dixon Oil in Rupert, along with Mad River Laser at 502 East Street in Rupert, and they're celebrating a great big Christmas in July at Mad River Laser. The entire Christmas line will be out and you can feel festive for the 4th of July and Christmas. All of this and more at Mad River Laser, one of my favorite stores, 502 E Street in Rupert. You stop over and see them today. Rita, Ramadan, the Islamic month of uh, what they call their holiness, uh, has resorted again into another terrorist attack here in this country as of yesterday at the Flint, Michigan airport with the stabbing of a police officer in the night with a 12-inch hunting knife. I, I just don't think people are dotting the I's and crossing the T's to see how s- extremely dangerous we are becoming as a nation with these Islamic jihadist attacks. Well, we are, and the sad part about that is is that we're not even talking about that. You won't hear a thing about that on the news today. I mean, we heard it two or three times, and it was kind of like, oh, somebody stubbed their toe and fell over, and they might sue somebody. I mean, that it was a one, one-line thing, and you heard it two or three times during the day, and that was it. Nobody wants to talk about anything else. And I did actually hear somebody, it was probably about 10 o'clock last night, say that, well, they're, they're looking in to see whether it's terrorist-related or not, and it's like, you're an idiot. Do you even understand what you said? That sounds so stupid. Of course it's terrorist-related. He even, he even associated, he made sure that everybody knew that he was, was part of that. Now, whether he's a lone terrorist or whether he's part of a big group, it doesn't really matter. They all believe the same, and they don't believe in peace and, and uh, being uh, kind and anything else, like a lot of the Muslims who who, um, you know, say, we were a peace-loving religion, well, and a lot of them are. But these radicals, they want everybody to know, and you've got a bunch of people just jumping on board, and uh, the news just totally refuses to acknowledge that it's it's radical Islam causing this, and, and we need to start having some attention on it so we get it under control. 
Another issue of what I would also call a verbal terrorism and verbal racism is in regards to a college professor, a black college professor, that in his class... He was waging war on whites and conservatives and telling the class at this college that he would like to see all the whites and conservatives gone from the face of the earth. My goodness, a teacher at a college? What kind of garbage is this? Well, if he doesn't like white conservatives, I suggest that he heads down to South Africa. He can be be down there and be amongst more black and find out how, how conservative white people really are fairly decent people he he needs to see the other side of the of the picture and if he doesn't like it here in america he ought to just leave i'm getting tired of this this is bleeding over so horrifically into the colleges to where you've got all kinds of people just saying oh man these white people they're just horrible i read a story this morning and the the headline is white staffer at college newspaper if you're white, you're probably racist. I mean, this is what they honestly believe, and you've got these kids in college just drinking the Kool-Aid, and they just think that, you know, the white man is just a scourge to the world, and if they had look at it and actually learn their history, they would find out that the white conservatives are the only ones that have ever stuck up for the black people and encouraged them to have their rights and... I mean, think of all the lives that were lost in the the Civil War. And, uh, you know, there were 600,000 lives lost in that war fighting so that the blacks could be free. Rita. And, and the, you don't, they, they never get credit for that. And that was white people, conservatives, saying, hey, this is not right. I, I may take some heat over this, which is fine. But I'm just going to say this, and I want to hear your response. For eight years, they had a man in office that was supposedly going to be very user-friendly to the blacks and minorities in this country. I did not see this man, Barack Obama, a mulatto, not a uh, Negro, but a mulatto by birth and blood. I did not see him do or say anything that was a unification factor for the races in this country. Am I wrong? Nope, you're absolutely right, and we've talked about this since he was elected. He has such an opportunity to bring blacks together, and all he did was divide and encourage violence and everything else, and then encourage violence against the the uh, the police officers and and everything else. And it was just, it's just really sad because he had such an opportunity to do it, but we know that he is not a, uh, a in love with America. He doesn't care for America. I think he stands on the uh, precipice of being a, a Marxist. And, and those kind of people do not like freedom and, and liberty and, and uh, conservative values. You know, I, I have never liked the man, never liked his ideology, and I tried to be fair during his presidency on things that might be construed as maybe a hand across the aisle. But I have never seen in my lifetime since Selma, Alabama, and the problems with George Wallace in Alabama in the 60s, I have not seen so much racial discontent as we're seeing right now. And I point my finger right at Obama's administration. I think I have uh, justified means of saying that. Well, we do, and the the thing of it is is that uh, the news media will never give credit where credit's due. And... um, uh, LBJ was the Harry Reid or the Senate Majority Leader when they were trying to get the uh, the Civil Rights Act passed, and he wouldn't hear of it. He wouldn't let it go. He wouldn't let it come to vote or anything else. And he was just a huge, huge racist Democrat. And and then he becomes president a little bit down the line, and and the Republicans finally push that through, and he signs it. And all of a sudden, he's the one who signed the the rights for for blacks and everything else, civil rights, saying, hey, you know, legally they need to have those civil rights, just like anybody else does. And yet he was one of the biggest <clears throat> bigots and racists that, that ever lived. And you never hear him talk about that. And so Obama comes along and he does all the kind of crap that he does and, and everybody ignores it. And and yet it's it's really the, the conservative white people 
that have tried to get the black people to be liberated and have the same types of rights that any other person has. Rita, I'm just about out of time. Real quick, anything you want to bring up real fast? i got exactly one minute left. Nope, I don't know of anything. Just everybody keep cool out there. Summer. <laughs> keep cool. All right. And Rita Ramsey from Ramsey Heating and Electric. If they need air filters for their air conditioner, you've got them, right? Yes, and I've been selling them like hotcakes, so there's plenty of them, and it's important to keep a clean filter or your conditioner will not work properly. Oh, Rita, have a great weekend. Talk to you next week. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you. Rita Ramsey, right here on the program every Thursday, and I appreciate it. Hey, you know what I'm going to talk about? You're way ahead of me right now. Yeah, I'm hungry. (laughs) Oh, boy, am I hungry. And starving to death. Well, I'm going to tell you all about the AC Drive-In, 601 East Main in Burley. Oh, they've got a special of shrimp and fries and fish and chips. Oh, my goodness, at just $6.50. And they've got all the delicious milkshakes, all the different flavors and have you tried that chicken fried steak sandwich oh knock your boots off delicious all of this and so much more along with the famous farmer brown burgers at ac drive-in 601 east main in burley well how about taco bandito 2301 oberland in burley mm-mm-mm I'm drooling when I talk about those new pork burritos. Beans, pork, rice, sour cream, and cheese. Oh, it is so good. And don't forget, Taco Bandito has bacon with jalapeno in it. I love that. You're going to love the food and the people at Taco Bandito, 2301 Overland in Burley. Well, how about Burgers Etc.? 124 South Oneida in Rupert and also the other location, 700 Overland in Burley. Root beer floats, only 99 cents after. After 3 p.m., I'll take four. Anyway, it's delicious. And fresh strawberry shakes, delicious burgers. Everything is great. Nice people, too. At Burgers Etc. on Oneida and Rupert and Overland in Burley. Well, let's move on over to Stevo's, 290 South, 600 West of Hayburn. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you're going to love the food over there at Stevo's. And they got that famous patio open for the summertime. Great atmosphere. You got to try that new salad. Chaos salad. Mm -mm -mm. Chicken breast with bacon, pickles, jalapeno peppers, and all the goodies. Great staff. And oh, try one of those buffalo burgers. You're going to love it. Open Monday to Saturday. 11 to 9 at Stevo's in Hayburn. And last but not least, Doc's Pizza, 514 6th Street in Rupert. Oh my goodness, they were just voted the best pizza in the Minicasha area again for 2017. And they've got that dessert pizza, Oreo cookie. Oh, it's a good, good pizza. All the pizzas, all the subs and soups and salads, and great people at Doc's Pizza, right on the square, 514 6th Street in Rupert. And those are just a few places to go when you're hungry and starving to death. We're going to take a little break right now and then be back after the CBS News. Don't you go away. Zeb at the Ranch. Oh, listen to that piano. Whoa! Oh, that's some good music there this morning. Good morning, everybody. Zeb at the Ranch. I'm Zeb Bell. And, of course, we have our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers like Western Way Services. Get on the route service today. Call 734-6969. Hey, Wheels, let's hear all about what's going on in Elko at the Silver State Stampede. Grab your hat and kick up your heels as the Silver State Stampede thunders into Elko for three big nights, July 13th through the 15th, for family entertainment at its best. This PRCA-sanctioned event brings you the thrill of pro riders going head-to-head, then local cowboys trying their luck in the world-famous Ring of Fear, such a thrill audience as all three nights. Enjoy the kickoff party on Thursday with Old West Bronc Riding, Mud and Bustin' Trade Show, Mechanical Bull, Fantastic Food, and treats, live music with the Jeff Paul 
Homer Band, and so much more. Tickets are on sale now at Roy's, the J.M. Capriola Company, the Moot Barn, IFA, and the Elko Chamber Office. Make your plans now to be at the Elko County Fairgrounds for the thrills and spills for the 2017 Silver State Stampede. For more information, call 775-934-2392. The 2017 Silver State Stampede. Don't miss it. I tell you what, it's a lot of fun. You better make plans to get on down to Elko, Nevada. Going to be a good one. Um, let's see. want to remind you that uh, we're going to be meeting at Denny's Restaurant this morning at 1130, our lunch bunch. Boy, I tell you what, folks, if you've never been there, you're going to have a nice time. It's just kind of a real relaxed setting, and we have a lot of nice people, nice people that are there, 55, 60, 65, 70 people right in that area, and we certainly appreciate all the work that Denny's does for us, Thomas and the whole crew, with the best of food and service, and then, of course, also, we give away some gift certificates in our drawings, and we'd like to thank our good friends with, of course, Walmart, Smith's Food King, Hanson Mortuary, Stokes Groceries, Doug Martin with the Redneck Cup Holders. It's just a real good time, so hopefully we'll see you there at about 1130 this morning. Uh, the Rupert Fourth of July celebration is coming up starting on June 28th, and I also want to acknowledge, i got to turn the paper here, hold on just for a second, some of the great businesses over there that would like you to be a part of the festivities include the Rupert Animal Clinic at 200 South Highway 24 in Rupert. They're a full-service facility servicing large and small animals, and uh, they encourage you, the owners of animals, uh, to make sure that you keep up your pets with vaccinations vaccinations, dental examinations, preventive care, and believe me, it will help save you money and also make your animal a happier animal. Now's the time also to vaccinate your horses and protect them from West Nile virus. Rupert Animal Clinic, 200 South, Highway 24 in Rupert, 436-9818. Along with our dear friend, Senator Kelly Anton. Boy, he loves Rupert and he loves all the activities going over there on the 4th of July celebration. And he says, come on over to Rupert and celebrate another great year of fun and festivities, great food, fireworks, horse racing, lawnmower races, and a lot more. Thank you, Senator Kelly Anthon. And, of course, Arusa Insurance, 723 South 3rd Street in Rupert. These are really, really nice people that can help you with your commercial and business insurance, auto insurance, home insurance, life and health insurance. They want to help you, and they care. Please get a hold of them today. Call 436 4420. That number again, 436 4420. And uh, they want you to come over and enjoy the 4th of July celebration in Rupert. Arusa Insurance. Right now, it's time for Cache County School Days. And Cache County School Days is brought to you by two great businesses. A Child's World at 1308 Overland and Burley. And they, of course, have all the baby gifts, all the baby furniture, the cribs, the changers, the car seats and everything, all the clothing, the games and the puzzles. Oh, my goodness, it is a family store. Child's World at 1308 Overland in Burley, along with the Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue in Burley. Write this number down and call them and learn how you can save money on your outpatient surgeries like glaucoma surgeries, colonoscopies, etc. 677-8888. 677-8888. Ambulatory Surgery Center and a Child's World bringing you now school days in Cache County. With us this morning on the phone we have the band teacher at Burley High School I believe he's been on the program in the past hello Tim Woods how are you good morning I'm doing great Tim uh, how long have you been a band teacher Oh, goodness, I've been doing this over 20 years. Over 20 years. Okay, but now let me ask you this. Uh, Has band and the enthusiasm for band, has it uh, increased or has it lessened? (laughs) Oh, over the years, that's going to ebb and flow a little bit. But for the most part, I just get more and more excited about doing band. You know, what about the kids, especially at Burley High School? Is it hard to recruit or ask students if they want to be a part of the band? How do you go about really making or piquing an interest in students to be a part of it? Well, the best way to do that is to keep um, keep, imp- 
improving the quality of the product. Make sure the music is, uh, A, something the kids like to play and something they're going to be learning from as they, as they play. And then uh, when we get out in the public eye, say for uh, concerts or uh, at a game or something, we try to make sure that the music is something the audience is going to enjoy as well and keep things going well that way. How do you, as a band teacher, uh, choose the music and know that these kids are going to really enjoy what they're learning? And the other part of that question is, what about all the instruments? How do you know who's going to play what and who's going to best fit in the band in a particular place? <laughs> that is kind of a challenge. Uh, since I'm at the high school, uh, even though we're starting a new thing this year where we can let high school students start in a different class, uh, we're going to do a beginning band for high school students. I should probably call it something else, uh, like uh, intro to band. But uh, the main thing is I, I get students coming up from the junior high where Dr. Q has already kind of got them excited. And so that part of my job is a lot easier than it would be otherwise. Um, I do do my best to make sure kids have the opportunity to pick an instrument maybe that they haven't had a chance to play at another time. Um, I give them that kind of uh, freedom to some extent. We still have to maintain some um, some ability and some confidence you know, on whatever we're playing at the time. So, yeah, it gets to be a challenge, but uh, conversations with kids and, and maybe a little extra time given to those kids to make that transition to a different instrument, we can make it work. You know, I have absolutely no musical ability whatsoever. The only thing I can play is the radio. I took accordion lessons. I took piano lessons. I took guitar lessons. And some people just don't have it. Would you agree? Oh, I rarely run into people that have that much trouble. But, you know, sometimes somebody is better skilled in another area and, you know, that's just fine. There are things I don't do well. <laughs> I, in fact, right now we've got some construction going on in the house, and that's just not my area of skill. Me neither. Let me ask you this, though. Uh, if you have a student come in and say, Mr. Woods, I'd like to be a part of the band, and I've never played an instrument before in my life, uh, how do you know? How do you know what to give them? A clarinet, a trumpet, a set of drums? What do you do? best thing to do is just sit down and talk to them for a little bit, see what it is they like, why do they want to play. And again, now that I have that opportunity with a, with a startup program for kids in high school, they can just start where they are on an instrument they're interested in, and over the course of that year, we'll rush through the material that they had sixth and eighth grade. Tim, let me interrupt you, Tim. Tim, wait a minute. Tim, can you hear me? Are you moving or uh, holding the telephone in a different fashion? If you are, stand still and hold the mic right up by your mouth. Don't move. Is, is that better? Yes, don't move. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, um, given the opportunity I have now to, to give kids the, the chance to start in another class now, we can get them rushed through that three years of preparatory material in one year. If okay, so now you, you, I want to pursue that question a little further, though. I mean, how do you know where to put people that come to a band uh, as far as the drums or the trumpet? Do you let them try all the different uh, musical instruments? What do you do? Yeah, that's generally what we do. That's what we do when they go into uh, a beginning band at the sixth grade level. And then uh, we can do the same thing now if they're interested in jumping in. It's a tougher thing to jump in at high school because the, the literature we're performing is, is much more difficult. But, uh, yeah, we give them a shot at several things, see what they fit in. And, and uh, we've done that a couple times. Uh, a couple of kids that have done really, really well. They find an instrument they're interested in, they work hard, they get some extra help, and away they go. Okay, now what about the first day of school? And again, hold that phone very still, please. Uh, what about the first day of school? You've got maybe 30, 40 kids in that classroom. What do you do to try to meld them all together? I mean, that's got to be quite a quite a uh, big cause and a big uh, problem, trying to get everybody to mold together into a single band, isn't it? Well, at the high school level, again, we've had kids who've been in programs like that, and they're a little more accustomed to doing it. So it's not as hard for them. They know what to expect on some level. But, uh, yeah, we, we, uh, we take some time. I, I talk to them a little bit, and we start playing. We get started playing right away. 
fact, uh, we're already planning getting ready for a marching program this year. Okay, now when you say marching program, are there still the interests and the competitions that used to be uh, prevalent back when I was in high school, way back in the 60s? There were a lot of competitions for marching high school bands and collegiate bands. What's it like today? Oh, that's still out there. It may not be what it was at that point, but uh, it's still available. In fact, we've got five weekends starting in September where we're out, five weekends in a row at competitions. Oh, my goodness. What makes your program over at Burley uh, maybe perhaps better than most or better than others? I mean, what kind of diligence, what kind of work do you have to do as a band teacher to make sure that you really turn out a good product? Oh, boy. Now we're into that competition thing. (laughs) Well, for marching, it is a competition. Um, We take the time. Uh, I, I plan my rehearsals pretty carefully. I know what it is I want to accomplish on a given rehearsal or practice day for the marching drills, and uh, we take the time to do it. The kids are sold out and they're going to get product. They're exci- they're, they see the excitement of the improvement we've had over the last year, and it's uh, it's an exciting thing. Kids want to make that happen. They want to put out a good product, and uh, give them the tools to do that in our rehearsals and our practice times on the field. Now, do you have assistants that help you? Uh, with various uh, concerts and maybe during the football games and and rehearsals during the week? Do you have people coming in and assisting you to listen and make sure that everybody's doing their job correctly, or is it just basically you as a one-man band? Well, in terms of um, funding from the district, yeah, I'm uh, a one-man guy. But I do have some assistant coaches that are giving me a hand. I've got a a young lady who's working with our uh, color guard, and I've got a gentleman here in town who's working with the percussion ensemble. So I've got Dr. Ron Christensen helping me with the percussion. He's done a fantastic job. Uh, we're losing you, Tim. You're moving again. You're moving. Stand still. I got you. That? I can't. Uh, you're, you're, you 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 got to stay in one place and stand perfectly still, or I can't hear you and I can't end the conversation. Repeat what you just said. Is that better? Okay. I am so sorry. I thought I was doing a good job of that. Okay. Um, yeah, I've got Dr. Ron Christensen helping us out with percussion. He's doing a fantastic job, and I've got Christian Davis working with the color guard, doing a lot of a lot of good stuff for us as well. And uh, the work that Dusty Fisher has done in the past. Is Wonderful for us, and uh, he helped us out at marching camp last year. And we worked with him this year with us uh, in terms of our visual design, so what you see on the field besides the kids marching and their uniforms. Okay. okay. We're having some trouble trying to get through and keep the voice at a level that we can hear it. And Tim Woods, the band teacher at Burley High School, I certainly appreciate you taking the time to come on the program this morning. Uh, next time we'll try to aim for a solid line phone. Appreciate it. Good luck going into this next fall season. And the best wishes for the Burley Band for 2017 and 18. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Our sponsors of this Cache County School Days are A Child's World at 1308 Overland and Burley and Ambulatory Surgery Center at 1344 Highland Avenue. The number to call is 677-8888. And we sincerely appreciate their involvement in promoting Cache County School Days. I would like, honestly, and I mean this, even my own, I'd like to take every cell phone and I'd like to take them over to the edge of the canyon and then just knock them over the ridge. Uh, You've got to be perfectly still when you call. You can't be walking around. You can't be moving or anything else. And the reception sometime is absolutely terrible. And uh, (laughs) I never have liked them on the radio. They're a scourge of the radio. Uh, let's see. We're going to go back over to Wheels right now. Wheels, do we have our buddy Juan from Barry Equipment and Rental ready to go? Uh, I am getting him on the phone right now. Okay, buddy. Hey, by the way, I apologize. We just had a hard time hearing our last guest. I hope that came through halfway decent. Okay. 
Uh, but anyhow, right now we're going to move over to Barry Equipment and Rental, and we're going to be talking to Juan. And right now they are really busy going into the summer for all the different equipment rentals, for all the different jobs and projects that you have on your property or your business, etc. And old Juan over here at the 159 West Highway 30 location in Burley at Barry Equipment and Rental, he's going to come on the program with us in just a moment. Uh, got some other notes to tell you about, and I want to remind you again that at 11.30 this morning, we're going to be over at Lunch Bunch at Denny's Restaurant, 611 North Overland in Burley. You are urged to attend. You don't need a membership. You don't need anything. Just come on in, join us, and you might be one of the winners of our many, many door prizes furnished by Walmart, Smith's, Hanson Mortuary, Stokes Food, and Doug Martin. Are we ready to go, Wheels? Yes, sir. All right, buddy. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, right now let's head over to Barry Equipment and Rental. And this young man's becoming quite a star in his own right because he's been on this program many times. Good morning, Juan. How are you? Pretty good. How about yourself? Not too bad. Uh, listen, what is going on during the summer over at Barry Equipment and Rental? I, I Tell us the equipment that's the hot item right now. The, the skidsters are moving like crazy. Now that that heater that's in the sky is working, um, everyone wants to move dirt, pick up hay bales, or move some pallets, and the skid steers could handle all three. Now, when you say skid steer, explain to my audience if they're kind of uh, machinery not intelligent like I am, and boy, believe me, I'm not. Uh, what exactly do they do? What do they look like? And what kind of jobs can you perform with them? Well, they are the, the older, smaller loaders. And well, they're not the older, they're the newer ones. And we have three different functions that we can set them up to for your liking. If you want to move them with your feet, you want to move them with your hand, side to side, front and back, whatever you want to do, we'll set them up for you. And they do just about anything. We can put the pallet forks on it, and you can move whatever you need to move. And we have the hay bale forks if you want to go ahead and stack your hay or just move it around. And we have the buckets, move dirt, manure, whatever you need to move. It'll go ahead and move it for you, and it's pretty user-friendly. You know, that's the thing right now. I would imagine a lot of guys like me that have maybe small horse operations and small, maybe little feedlots or whatever, they're going to be getting those feedlots and those pens and corrals all cleaned out. Now's the time to check out those uh, Bobcat uh, skid steers, right? Absolutely. And we just don't carry one size of skid steer. We have all sizes. We have big old track machines if you just want to move big, big, big piles of dirt or my personal favorite, the S450. It fits just right perfectly under just any corrals or anything, and, and you can get in some pretty tight, tight spaces and move whatever you need to move. Okay, now explain to me and others, if they need to rent a bobcat like this, I mean, they've never done it before. I've never done it before. What What's the procedure? What do we need to do? Well, we'll get you in it, and uh, we'll explain how everything works, and so you can get a good feel on how it works. We'll put you down in our pit, and we'll help you run it, and and so you can get a good feel of it on how it feels and how it works. And so, and after that, we'll just load it on the trailer and let you go on your way. Okay. Now, uh, is it a long procedure of trying to rent a bobcat or any piece of equipment? What do they need to bring with them, and how long and lengthy is the process? Oh, it's uh, it's pretty quick. Just bring, just come on in, bring your ID. We'll get your account set up and see what you need to do. Uh, or what uh, equipment you want to take, and then after that, we'll just load you up and get you going. And you mentioned about the practice pen or the sandbox out behind. Have you had anybody that you just threw your hands up in the air and says, I'm sorry, we just can't rent to you, <laughs> like me? <laughs> My wife came pretty close, but she redeemed herself. That's okay. the only one. Okay, well, she I... not do the work I do. I, I think I'd be real careful about incriminating your wife, Juan. <laughs> That's not a smart thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> what else is going on over there at Barry Equipment and Rental right now as we draw closer to the 4th of July weekend? I'll bet you a lot of people are going to stay home and try to get a lot of work done on their property. Oh, yeah, and we have everything that you need. If you just want to, you have a small patch of, of ground that you want to till up so you can plant some flowers to get your lawn looking pretty nice, or we have the BTU burners to burn up, uh, burn up some ditches if you want. 
Um, we got everything, everything that you need to do so you can get your work done just no. in time for the 4th of July. Absolutely. No one should be working on the 4th of July. Absolutely. Um, hey, one of the things I had a call the other day from a party that was listening, we were talking about those Walker mowers, and the caller said to me after I was off the air, they said, well, what's so special about those Walker lawnmowers? What do you want to say about them? Oh, they're, they're, they're the machine. There's everything. Everything about them is great. They're easy to work on. They're easy to run, and they leave the beautiful cut like no other mower does. Don't get me wrong. John Deere does good. Have, does have a good mower, but this is specially designed to have a true floating deck that leaves a cut that nothing can match up to it. Now, are you still offering the zero percent interest for forty-eight months on those Walker mowers? On every single Walker mower we have. Oh, my goodness. So you've got retail equipment sales and equipment rentals, and wow. I mean, uh, you've got anything and everything available for people that need equipment now for jobs that need to be done. Oh, yeah, and especially like with walker mowers, um, we don't expect you just to come look at it and buy it. I want, I want you to get on it and make sure that's the mower you want. I'll take it out to your house and let you mow your lawn and see how it feels. Okay, now, what are your hours that you're open, and uh, what about the other locations? Give us all that information. We're open Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 5.30, um, and then on Saturdays, we are open from 7.30 to 5, and we have our Jerome location off of South Lincoln to 2331 South Lincoln Avenue in Jerome, and then we have the Twin Falls store that is 465 Addison Avenue in Twin Falls, and then the store with the best-looking mugs here on 159 West Highway 30 here in Burley. I, I'm a little concerned, Juan. I really am. After you incriminated your wife of not being very good at running the equipment, I fear for your safety when you go home tonight. <laughs> I hope she didn't listen. She usually does, but I... Hopefully she got busy. <laughs> well, listen, you may get a haircut, and I'm going to let it go at that. <laughs> Thanks for being on the program, Juan. God bless you, man. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. All right. Barry Equipment and Rental, Sales, Service, and Parts, and, of course, locations in Jerome, Burley, and Twin Falls. Right now, we're going to send it back over to our main studios, and we'll be back in about three minutes. Don't go away. Zeb at the Ranch. And now, back to Zeb at the Ranch on AM 1230 KBAR. To reach Zeb, call 436-2244 or toll free 1-866-927-4587. And now, here is Zeb Bell. And uh, welcome back. And I open the door and let you come on in with your calls and your comments for the next little bit. I'd like to hear what you have to say as we kind of wrap up the week a little bit. Let's relax a little bit. Maybe you've got a great or a complaint, maybe you've got some issue that you'd like to talk about this morning, just give me a call right now at 436... <laughs> I forgot the number, 2244. I've only been doing this for 15 years. The number has not changed, Zeb. Or 1-866-927-4587. That's what you call maybe having a little bit of a brain bubble there for a moment. Uh, while I'm waiting for your call that I'm sure is coming in, don't forget the Oregon Trail muzzle loaders. Man, these folks know how to have a good time and a good family time. Absolutely. They're going to have their 36th annual rendezvous this weekend up at Albion. And it's going to be a ripping good time. And Rick and Mitzi Ramsey and a lot of great folks up there, they welcome you to come on up and take part in it. They're going to have uh, the traders up there with all kinds of different uh, goods and uh, the public's welcome to attend. And uh, Friday night they're going to have a potluck dinner at 6.30 p.m., and then Saturday they're going to have their big council fire and their frying pan toss and all kinds of entertainment, and uh, just a lot of fun for the entire weekend. So don't forget that. The Oregon Trail Muzzle Loaders 36th Annual Rendezvous up in Albion this weekend. You try to be there and enjoy it. They go way back into the 1840s with their clothing and the muzzle loaders and everything. Just really a good time. Good time. All right, give us a call, 436-224-1-866-927-4587. Give me a call if you would. Please, I would love to hear from you on any subject. 
Um, Fourth of July coming up this uh, in a couple of days, and I just want to issue a warning to everybody with fireworks and with uh, perhaps maybe the fire season and uh, the danger of getting burned or whatever the case might be. Please, I don't care if it's little fireworks bags you buy at a store someplace, be careful out there. Use common sense and don't start any fires or have anybody get burned or have fireworks that's going to go shooting off the ground and maybe hit somebody, put out an eye. Be careful please calls welcome 436-224-1866-927-4587 in an update on what's going on with this possible russian collusion and meddling even some of the top ranked democrats are finally starting to back up a little bit including former homeland security secretary jay johnson he testified that the democratic national committee last Last year turned down his agency's offer to help protect its network despite being warned about a possible hack and he also confirmed that while russia at the direction of president vladimir putin orchestrated cyber attacks on the united states to influence the 2016 presidential election moscow was unable to after All was said and done. So basically, what Jay Johnson said at that uh, ceremony and that testimony yesterday, said, to my current knowledge, the Russian government did not, through any cyber intrusion, alter the ballots, ballot counts, or reporting of the election results. And that's what uh, former Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson said yesterday before the House Intelligence Committee. Now, after all that being said by other Democrats and then also Jay Johnson, will the Democratic Party let this thing go and get back to helping us and the progress of the United States of America. I certainly hope so. I think what we're going to do right now is maybe do an early weather forecast, and I'll explain why, because I've got to leave and hit the road to get down to Lunch Bunch, and I don't like getting traffic tickets for speeding, so I'm going to leave a few minutes early in just a little bit, and Wheels is going to play some extra tunes for us. But right now it's time for our weather, and the weather brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome, and you can go to their website and see all the wonderful products that they've got for you and your family at scarrowsmeats.com and i'll tell you all the breakfast sausages the bratwurst oh my goodness you are gonna love it so please remember call them at 324-7657 or go to the website scarrowsmeats.com scarrows meats in jerome and right now here's gina with the weather a little bit more on the mild side for the next couple of days. And as we get on into the weekend, it could be warming up. Here's your weather forecast. Looks like sunny skies for today. A little on the breezy side. Winds out of the west right around 15 miles an hour. Expecting a high of 80 tonight. Clear skies, low of 49. For tomorrow, sunny skies, high of 81 with an overnight low of 50. Sunny and 85 for Saturday, close to 90 for Sunday. That's your weather for Zebeth Ranch. Man, that was a pleasant forecast. We haven't had a multiple day pleasant forecast for a long, long time. That's a good one, Gina. Thank you very much. Hey, Scarrows meets Don Scarrow and the rest of the crew, located at 331 North Road, Jerome. My, oh my, they've got the best of meats. I love breakfast, and they've got all the breakfast sausages and brats, like I said earlier, and they are changing the way we eat one delicious bite at a time. You be sure and stop over to Scarrows Meats. All right. My goodness, I thought, sure, I'd have a call or two real quick before we had to wrap things up here this morning. And uh, I'll take the time to talk about anything you want to talk about for the next couple of minutes. So give us a jingle on the landline. And uh, while I'm waiting for your call, I also want to say thank you very, very much to our major sponsor, and that's your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. You know, before you leave to go anywhere, you know, kind of give yourself a little visual inspection of your automobile and say, oh, wait a minute, I got some bald tires on here. Well, maybe you better get in right now to your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. We're doing the right 
thing matters. I'll tell you what, they've got all the tires for all your driving needs. Maybe you just drive around here in the valley. Maybe you take off and you go on a lot of cross-country trips. Well, they've got the tread design and the tires just for you. And ask about the free pre-trip safety check, too. And it's a visual inspection of your tires, including air pressure, wheel alignment to check out the tire wear, front-end components, brake components, shocks and struts, battery with a load test, I'm telling you what, they really care. It's a free pre-trip safety check from all seven locations of your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers with Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, Daniel on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Wheel, are you going to go to uh, Lunch Bunch this uh, afternoon, this morning, I should say? I I am trying to make it this afternoon. No, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What's this trying, Kimosabi? You you won a bunch of gift certificate money last last month. You got to come back. I'm still figuring out if I'm having my grandma or my mom or somebody come. Okay, or well, if I'm just going to come by myself. You're always welcome, and I know the rest of the lunch bunchers always enjoy having you there. And uh, what about summer activities for the Fourth of July? What are you going to do? Well, honestly, I think I might just kind of hang out and be around my family. I think that's uh, the number one thing. Um, you know, usually we would do something with my grandpa, but... Uh, do you ever make any homemade ice cream on the 4th of July? To be honest, no. I haven't made home homemade ice cream in a long time. Oh, I tell you what. I love homemade ice cream, and if I am here on the 4th, next to, no, a week from next Tuesday, that's one of the things I'm going to do is try to get one of those homemade ice cream makers. I haven't done this for years and years, and I'm going to make some homemade ice cream. Uh, see, now that you bring that up, I might have to go and see if maybe Walmart has some homemade ice cream, you know, equipment. I'll they bet they make. do. And uh, you make the strawberry, I'll make the vanilla, and then we'll have somebody else make the chocolate, and we'll have our own little Neapolitan ice cream. That definitely sounds like a plan to me. I, I would love that. All right, we got one time for one call. We'll take it real quick whenever they're ready on the air. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Good morning. Hey, I remember going camping one time with a bunch of horses and buggies, and we made homemade ice cream up in the hills. I brought my little Honda generator, and we had, uh, oh, shoot, my mind just went blank, a cobbler uh-huh. and homemade ice cream. Oh. The next morning, there was probably about three inches of ice cream still in that container, but it had melted. Uh-huh. And they started using it as creamer in their coffee. The gals just loved it. I'll tell you what, you've got me smacking my lips already. That sounds really good because it used to be a family must every year at my home growing up in Wisconsin that after we went to the 4th of July parade, we'd go home and we'd have a great big barbecue and my dad and mom would make homemade ice cream and oh, was it good. Yeah, and I remember growing up, the main time we made homemade ice cream was when my grandparents come back from picking wild blackberries. Uh huh. And my grandmother would make a blackberry, wild blackberry cobbler. Ooh. We'd have homemade ice cream. Ooh. <laughs> I'm coming to your house, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, God bless you. See you at lunch, Budge. All right. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you to everybody for being a part of the program this week. We had some outstanding guests, and we had some outstanding good conversations. And thank you for all your calls. I'm going to cut out of here a little bit early. Wheels is going to play some music for you, and we're going to head for Lunch Bunch. We welcome you to come over to Denny's at 611 North Overland in Burley. Zeb Bell, Zeb at the Ranch, you have a great week, a safe weekend. And we'll see you back here Monday at 8.06. Remember, the way things were are the way things ought to be.